very deep indeed. And whenever Manchester United and Liverpool lock horns, the football world sits up and takes notice. Paul Parker plays his first league game for six months. One of nine full internationals fielded by Alex Ferguson today. But the doyen of them all, Brian Robson, is still sidelined with calf trouble. So Darren Ferguson stays in midfield. Defensively, the side is in great shape. But if they are finally to win the championship, everyone here knows they have to find the route to goal on a much more regular basis. Yeah, no surprises in the lineup either, Martin. As you see, that back four will take some breaking down today. But it's at the other end of the pitch where Alex had his problems, Alex Ferguson. Big onus on Mark Hughes and Brian McLaren. And can Kinchelskis and Giggs cause them Liverpool problems down the flanks? Well, the progress of the junior members of the Sunis squad has satisfied the manager so much that on current form, he says, the likes of Jamie Redknapp, Don Hutchison and Mike Marsh would keep their places even if all the missing stars were fit. Jan Mulvey is back and he comes in for Mark Walters who limped out of a training session on Friday. Rob Jones not quite ready yet, Mark Wright not involved, but Michael Thomas is a substitute after playing 70 minutes of a B-team game yesterday. Yeah, I did wonder how they would play. I wonder whether Ronnie Rosenthal would play up front with Ian Rush, but that's not going to happen. The system that proved so effective against Sheffield Wednesday at home, a five-man midfield, means that Ronnie Rosenthal will occupy the berth vacated by Mark Walters and his injury. Rush will play alone for a up front. And here's one to watch for everyone at home today. Two kids making names for himself in the Premier League this season. Mike Marsh, his defensive capabilities will be severely tested against the shining light in football today, Ryan Giggs. For all the two Welshmen, good friends but rivals today. And Ian Rush, it's almost a record a week for him these days, it seems. But now he's on the verge of one to really treasure. One more goal, and he's out on his own as Liverpool's all-time leading scorer. Old Trafford tends to provoke memories of the past. High on the list for Keith Hackett, the United Arsenal match he refereed here almost two years ago when both sides were docked league points for their bad behaviour. Neither club is setting the pace in the Premier League. The absence of the Stratford end takes some of the sense of theatre out of Old Trafford temporarily. But Manchester United against Liverpool is an irresistible ingredient in the recipe of the English game. And for Manchester United today, Mark, an opportunity to go third in the Premier League table. Great incentive for his side. Liverpool in green. If support counts for anything, the odds overwhelmingly in United's favour. Liverpool officially restricted to some 700 tickets. Here's Hutchison. Well, Keith Hackett, who was five yards away, quite emphatically waved away any hopes that well, Liverpool Steve might Bruce have had wasn't, it. wasn't amused with this at all. As Don Hutchison works very well to get in there. Keeps hold of the ball, battling for it. Here he touches it, and I think he goes in looking for the penalty. And Keith Hackett absolutely spot on. Hutchinson has scored in Liverpool's last three games. Here's Picnic. Bruce in quickly on rush. a fabulous atmosphere here, isn't it? These matches so often provoke extremes of emotion. Extra motivation, even extra motivation for Manchester United after Liverpool beat them in April to, prevent, to present the championship to Leeds. Bruce Gravela had a very successful testimonial occasion last weekend of which Andy Gray was a part a very small part thankfully though Martin oh, 
Rosenthal is offside. He's the player who's actually come back into the side because of the Walters injury. Jan Mulvey would have played in any case with Graham Souness expecting Manchester United to play more or less five in midfield. Brian McClare, the floater, who's well up alongside Hughes at the moment. And ahead of him now, Kanchelskis on the ball. Here's McClare. Liverpool slow to close that gap. Ferguson. Well, looking for his first goal of the season, Darren Ferguson there. But getting in there, that's the important thing. It's a good build-up. Players join in well. Kanchelskis pulls it back. It's Darren Ferguson that arrives, but just uses the wrong foot for me. That deflected off Redknapp. It's Ferguson again. And you do feel that he needs to, a goal to get going, to lift his confidence in that type of situation. Well, already in the first three minutes, he's shown that he wants to get forward. I just wonder if that's with Brian Robson returning to fitness. But again, in that occasion for, for Darren Ferguson, didn't really show a great deal of conviction. Liverpool survive. Alec Ferguson says his team is nine-tenths of the way there in terms of its development. The missing tenth is quite clear for all to see at the sharp end of the side, the attacking end of the side, and really we've seen a little bit of that already. But a bit unlucky over there. I mean, Darren Ferguson's got in there twice. And I think probably his lack of goals, he wasn't filled with the confidence he probably should have been. Liverpool in the throes of the reconstruction under Graham Souness, but three consecutive wins in three different competitions coming into this game. And they're determined to show that there's plenty of life left in England's most successful club. Ferguson. Here's Hutchison and uh, now McManaman. As he looks up, he can see Rush in the middle. He's certainly not shy of holding the ball, and in doing that, he's been fouled by Ferguson. It's a free kick to Liverpool. I think that's going to be the problem today, Liverpool. If they break like that, is getting people from the midfield area up in support of Ian Rush. Was noticeable there that. Steve McManaman was trying to wait for people to come and they just couldn't catch him up quick enough. Mulvey takes the free kick. It was uh, an all Danish idea. Torben Picknick really has been a late developer. He didn't play for Denmark until last November. He went to the European Championships as a reserve, got into the team and has stayed in there and here he is now representing Liverpool and taking on the third day on view, Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> Pallister, whose belief in his own ability on the ball sometimes gives the opposition a chance to take it from him. Offside, but Keith Hackett is the type of referee who likes to keep the going game going whenever he can. He has to stop it now. I think the Gary Palace has shown that he's not frightened to use the ball. He'll play from the back. Dennis Irwin playing at left back with Paul Parker on the right hand side of Manchester United's back four. The pitch, incidentally, has benefited a great deal from the way the weather's been allowed to get at it because of the open end. Now the Stratford end has been knocked down. It's been a great help to the diligent work of Keith Kent, the groundsman. Picnic for Rosenthal. And now Mulvey. 
think Liverpool are absolutely sure what John Hutchison's best position is yet. He's got the whole range at his disposal. But he's a raiding midfield man with an eye for goal in the present climate. As I say, one in each of the last three games, four in the last five. Now Manchester United would like to have somebody with those statistics. It's a big onus on Hutchison and, and Jamie Redknapp today as well. With Ian Rush playing up there on his own, it's vitally important that at least one of them is getting up in support of him. Rush is down. The shot from Marsh. And Ian Rush looks for some comfort from the referee who explained again, I'm sure, that Liverpool had kept the ball and that's why the game went on. of course has won his place back from David James it's his fifth match since his return to the side Grubler's had some strong words to say over the past couple of weeks about commitment or rather the lack of it from one or two of the Liverpool contingent but certainly one would suspect there'll be no lack of commitment in this match that's and you just put Manchester United and Liverpool together in any fixture and you'll get commitment if you don't, Martin, you get found out on that little green patch of grass in front of us. Rosenthal. Here's Redknapp. Rush. It's quick. And it's effective until it came to the shot from Jamie Redknapp. But it's an indication of the greater self-belief that Liverpool have been able to manufacture over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and I think the confidence that the young kids are showing, and as Graham Sinis says, they're in the team, Jamie Redknapp's and Don Hutchinson's and Mike Marsh, because they deserve to be on the team and they want it in a place. But that a little cameo there, a lot of the confidence that he's playing with Jamie Redknapp. Hutchison. A nerveless place to play by Grobola as Mark Hughes came in with some menace. Parker, stopped by Burrows. Rosenthal sending in the wrong way. Mulby. Now McManaman. Paul Ince, who operated as one of Paul Gascoigne's minders really in midfield for England on Wednesday and played his part. Kanchelskis gets the run of the ball against Burrows. Picnics come across. They've got to be careful now with the tackles inside the area, but Kanchelskis rather made the job easier for Liverpool. I don't think Brian McLaren helped can break in Chelsea's at all there, but coming really over and bringing extra defenders over. But David Burrows has got to be careful. He can't afford to dive in at somebody like Andre Kachelski if he's not 100% sure he's going to win the ball. Well, diving in there was Hutchison on Ince. Ball broke United's way. Losing the championship to Leeds was bad enough for Manchester United, but to have it effectively finished off at Anfield really stuck in their throats. So there's uh, a fair measure of revenge on the United agenda. Yeah, I think only recently we had Steve Bruce in one of the shows, and he was even saying then that it still rankles with him the fact that it was Liverpool who finally killed off their chances. I think they quite enjoyed it at Anfield. <laughs> Brian Giggs. With a uh, defence to confront, marshalled by Steve Nicholl. Mark 
Hughes has hit the lows and the highs recently. Sent off in Moscow, taken off at Middlesbrough. And he grabbed the deciding goal in the Coca-Cola Cup tie against Brighton, followed by that World Cup winner for Wales in Cyprus last Wednesday. Leclerc, Liverpool retreat. Kanchelskis yes. borrows, though, not sitting back. Forcing back, in fact, Andrew Kanchelskis. Nicely done by Irwin. Playing over the top of Marsh. Giggs. Hughes trying to get in first, and it won't roll for McLaren, not quite. Well, you can see early on, if I was Alec Ferguson and Brian Kidd, I'd be screaming to get the ball to Ryan Giggs as often as possible. Just twice he's shown that if they can get it there and get it in the holes, he's got the pace to get away from Mike Marsh. We see him, he creates the space himself with a great run, and that means that Steve Nichols drawn out the middle. And I just wonder if he'd have gone over this, Mark Hughes. Brian McClear probably tapping it into the net. I just wonder in that situation if, if Brian McClear actually gave Mark Hughes a little shout, because if he had done, then it would have been easy for Mark Hughes just to have taken the central defender away from the ball to play and just allow it to run through to Brian McClear. This atmosphere would have to be a big shout, I think. And certainly, if it was there, it wasn't her. Hutchison. No one back for United by Ferguson. Diggs, McClare, bounced off Nickel. And he uh, managed to get the ball without provoking a blast on the whistle from T. Packett. But look at Manchester United swarming them forward here. And now they do get a free kick. Well, I tell you, there's probably so many tackles here to keep back at. They probably felt, well, one of them must be illegal. I thought they were a bit fortunate to get this. I actually think it's a good tackle. It comes in. Yeah, you see it there. And I don't know if it's for Dunn Hodgson just coming in a little bit late. I think that was all it could have been for. But if you doubted the intensity of the game, that incident would have ended the doubts. All the emotion of this particular match encapsulated in United's wish to get the ball the shot came from Irwin and Grevelaar athletically prevents the corner Grevelaar playing his club football these days in between commuting back to the African continent having been able to pick up his career with Zimbabwe that's legal enough from Nickel. It's important for Steve Nicholl in Liverpool that he's very aware. Playing the right side and centre-back as he is doing, he'll be very conscious of the fact that he really has to go to protect Mike Marsh as often as possible. Mulby. That was uh, made easy for Rush by the precision from Mulby. Rosenthal, who is a natural runner with the ball. Parker's very quick, but short on matches. They can't prevent the cross, and Schmeichel, for a second, seemed to have left the space there. The ball actually passed into the side of the net. I think he's very relieved, Peter Schmeichel, here. Looks to me as if he moves out for the cross just there, and there is a yard gap, and he's a happy man to see that slip into the side netting. But the one thing Ronnie Rosenthal will do when he gets the ball, he'll run at people. Hughes, who's so strong and so durable, and this is few matches with injury. Just one thing, Andy, you were saying earlier about Steve Nicholl and uh, Graham Souness not wanting to be drawn on Mark Wright's future, but what he was saying yesterday was how pleased he is with Nicholl and Picnic, who, of course, are a new pairing, relatively new in the centre of defence, but this will be their biggest examination so far. to say again, Mark Wright not in the 14 for Liverpool in this match. Redknapp in rush to Mulvey. Well, we'd love to send one flying past Schmeichel. 
be showing mobility to get across then as well. He does have this style which seems to suggest you don't need to run to play football. <laughs> but he was moving quickly then. I think what you need to do if you're playing Jan Mobile, you have to get on the ball, Martin. You can't expect him to go and graft and, and get tackles and you wouldn't expect him to run forward. But what you must do, and the other Liverpool players must do, is get on the ball. Then you see the best of him. Parker. A bit of hesitation by Grobelar, but then he realised that he would get it and did. attitudes in this fixture in the past but I must say both teams have begun the game with uh, playing football of a pure variety uppermost in their thoughts Rosenthal trying to contribute to that theme well uh, recovered Parker it's certainly a pitch to encourage the passing game he's got a job on one Rosenthal if he thinks he's going to run Paul Parker he really has one of the quickest players in the Premier League. And there's always Ince to help Parker out. Parker's missed so many England call-ups over the past year or so. Played in the World Cup semi-final, remember? Goes off Parker for a Liverpool corner. Coming up to 19 minutes gone. Manchester United nil, Liverpool nil. United haven't beaten Liverpool in the league in any of the last three seasons. McManaman and Burrows with their version of the short corner. In for McManaman. Oh, and for a second, it looked as though Rush's great moment might be looming. Picnic. McManaman. Manchester United's proud defensive record under threat here. And knocked it too far ahead. Well, if I need any confidence in can you open up Manchester United, certainly in the last minute of the match, he will have given them that. Two real golden opportunities, particularly for Ian Rush. Well, Liverpool's league position is poor. The managerial style of Graham Souness has provoked such suspicion in some quarters, but their form guide has improvement written all over it. 21 goals scored in the last seven games. Three straight wins. And they've not betrayed the philosophy of the way Liverpool teams play the game. Parker again got to it. We'll see how quick Picnic is here. And the answer is quick enough. Excellent play. Really was very good covering there. Flag up for offside and a chance to have a quick word down the touchline with our reporter, David Livingston. Martin, the Liverpool management team in the dugout behind me have really been cranking up the performance of their team after what they thought was a bit of a slow start. Uh, wakey, wakey was the cry early on. Now they're looking for Ronnie Rosenthal to test Paul Parker. A tall order indeed. Martin. Well, here is Rosenthal. Mulby. Plenty of numbers in midfield suiting Liverpool. Marsh. Now Redknapp. Slow to get a challenge in, really. But it breaks down with Ferguson. The greater worry for Liverpool really is the number of goals that they've conceded this season. In a way, their record very much the opposite to Manchester United's, who hardly let any in, haven't scored too many more. Whereas Liverpool have been scoring them, and I'm afraid shipping them in at their own end. I do think, I get the feeling in this game already, Mark, that if, if Manchester United allow Liverpool time and space to pass the ball around, then Liverpool might give them more problems than they bargained for today. They look confident in their own ability in this formation. 
And if they can get the ball to Jan Morgan, he can bring people into play. Then they certainly could cause this normally solid Manchester United defence quite a few problems. Well, the all head to head at the start. Giggs against Marsh. Looming there. Mike Marsh, who's turning out to be a very versatile performer for Liverpool staff. He was a striker in the junior ranks. There's Marsh there playing in onside. So the ball from Bruce was too long. Owen's header. There's Nat Fogg in the This is McManaman. Mulvey. And again. Hutchison. Oh, they're backing off him, and it came off Bruce, and it's ended up in the back of the net. And Liverpool have taken the lead, and Hutchison has played a major role for Liverpool again. Well, they've allowed them to work the position, didn't they? I said if they allow Liverpool to pass the ball around in three openings, we could pay for it. I think they don't go and close the ball down the way they should. Look, Steve Bruce goes late gets the deflection, and that's the crucial moment in that. Don Hutchison, who was signed almost two years ago, played in the same Gateshead Boys Club that was uh, previously a vehicle for Paul Gascoigne. And his sense of goal grabbing from midfield has brought him a goal though be it with the help of a big deflection for the fourth successive game rosenthal has just gone out well now it's manchester united have just got to steady themselves just settle down get back to playing the game the liverpool's tails well and truly up it was a slow start by graham sunes's side but the goal coming after a period where their confidence was starting to shine through and Manchester United were allowing them far more freedom in midfield than one would have expected and that was a major factor in the nature of the goal that United have now conceded. Bit of uh, argy-bargy there between Giggs who's been penalised and Marsh. Too impressed with the decision, was he, Ryan Biggs? Well, I've got a game on that. Yeah. Did you ever doubt it? No, but when Liverpool get a goal, when everybody says they're struggling, and Manchester United's defence has looked so solid all season, Liverpool come to Old Trafford and they go ahead in the first 25 minutes, and you can bet that the Old Trafford faithful will be doing their best to help the side. Manchester United, his main fault and inability to score goals, now have to get two to win it, at the very least. Just under 20 minutes to go to half-time. A long road ahead for Liverpool to sustain this. But they been improving their results, they've been improving their performances. Graham Sunis has been keeping pretty silent about it. But I know privately he's been very pleased with the progress. has come forward at the free kick. Bruce is there, of course, as well. McManaman. And uh, in this formation, Liverpool have certainly got an outlet on both flanks. Players are quite comfortable having the ball at their feet. McManaman might have done better to try and keep it then. His ball infield was a bit wayward. 
cut long by Nickel. has to do so much of his work game after game as the only central player for Manchester United. It's been that way for some time now. And McManaman's on the ball, more on that in a moment. Mulby. Rush making his movement across the edge of the penalty area, trying to drag defenders away from players like Rosenthal. Fire a deflection, and it's United's throw. I was going to say that Alec Ferguson's very keen to get Lee Sharp back from his illness. He had uh, another junior game yesterday, and that might free gigs to play in a more central role in uh, later matches this season. McClare offside, Kanchelski, even so, Grobelar was so quick. Oh, come on, long, long way then. It was a late flag from the lines, but I do think it was the right one, the right decision. It's always very difficult with players with a pace of Andrew Kinchelsius run diagonally across the pitch, but I think the linesman quite right. But look at Bruce Grobel out there, right on his toes. He's as keen as anyone. Kept his first clean sheet of the season, didn't he, against Sheffield Wednesday in the last Premier League game. And he'll be anxious to put a couple of those together. Was not just his, that was Liverpool's first clean sheet of the season. Remember, David James played in 11 games without the uh, satisfaction of a shutout. And played very well in a good majority of those as well. Marsh. But how will Liverpool go from here? Uh, just showing one or two signs of defending perhaps a little deeper than Graham Souness would like. Having got their noses in front. Giggs has the space to get past Marsh. There is. It's wonderful work from Giggs. McClare tried to let it run. And it was a, a hammering try from Ince. The point I made at Wembley, he doesn't get many goals, but when he does, they're usually ones that live long in the memory. Again, Giggs though, isn't it? He's the one that's managed to open up and create the space. And as it just drops down to the end, nothing in his mind but hitting this. Tight angle. Bruce deals with it easily enough. Mulby. Oh, and that wasn't aimed for Hutchison. Couldn't get out of the way. McClare. And on the court, but only as far as Bruce. Both sides at the moment giving the ball away rather more than they were earlier in the match. Marsh. Redknapp. It's another misplaced pass. It's as if there's been an injection of tension into the players produced by the goal. Manchester United because they've got to try and get it back. Liverpool because they've got to defend it. Panchelski, there's no flag this time, but there is Grobelar. Here it comes. <laughs> Not far short of us up here. What Liverpool are doing quite well at the moment is when they lose the ball, they're pulling everyone back behind it if they can, apart from Ian Rush, and saying to Manchester United, you're the ones that are lacking goals. Try and beat us if you can. Well, he wouldn't blame players if they frown with the importance of this match, but Bruce can manage to smile whenever he plays. Now, what did that go out of Rosenthal? Is it handball? I think it might well be. Yeah, you've just seen Ronnie Rosenthal dive in there. And... Uh, Ian Rush was delaying the taking of the free kick by encroachment. He was concerned perhaps about Ronnie Rosenthal. I think probably more concerned about the quality of the ball that Manchester United might manufacture here. From Giggs, and uh, it's sliced away by Marsh. Gives the signal. 
in goes Bruce, so often a weapon at the uh, corners, that came off Rush, Kovla knows he's got to kick it. Must be terrible for that situation of goalkeepers, they don't quite see what's happening. Well, luckily Bruce is alive as always. Luckily the rules seem to be invented for a player of his temperament. McManama. Who's going to chase this one? It's Kanchelskis. Liverpool were wrong-footed. McClare's by the far post. It doesn't get anywhere near there. It goes behind off Hutchison. It's a corner. It's a poor ball, really, from Andrew Kanchelskis. Really. All the work. He's done all the work in getting there. And he just barely had to stand it up. Life has become more difficult again for Liverpool. A goal to the good, though. Ferguson. Play on, says Keith Hackett. And again. He's a very, very experienced referee who won't be phased by the drama that this particular day can bring. Taking a chance at times, Liverpool. They really are. And when they're pushing up, with no real pressure on the ball, they're just playing, coming up, trying to play offside, and really, nearly paid for it. Well, Manchester United have gone out of Europe already because of an inability to score goals. Now they've stuck Ryan Giggs through the middle. Oh, and it very nearly played off straight away. Well, Torben Picnic just completely went to sleep there. There's absolutely no danger, and he just treated the presence of Ryan Giggs as if he wasn't there. Superb touch from Giggs, but just doesn't get up high enough. Ryan Giggs, who didn't go to Cyprus with Wales. Touch of controversy about that. Terry Europe, the Wales manager, keeping his own counsel on the injury and the fact that Giggs is playing today. Liverpool often weakened by the demands of international call-ups, but less so at the moment. Rush. Mulby comes onto it. But when they talk about Ian Rush and his great goal-scoring record, it should not be uh, forgotten that he does plenty outside the penalty area as well. He's one of the toughest workers in the game and hardest workers in the game. But for the moment, he's had to give the goal-scoring mantle away to Don Hutchison. I feel a little bit for Peter Schmeichel there, because he did have the shot covered, and he's moved it to the right initially, and he just couldn't get back across goal. But two goals and, and two league games for Don Hutchison, both rather unorthodox, if you remember his winner against Sheffield Wednesday. Well, in a number of countries around the world, Italy in particular, that would go down as an own goal against Steve Bruce, but not here. And who are we to spoil this splendid run that Hutchison's enjoying at the moment? Far better than he can ever have hoped for at the start of the season, when he uh, hadn't then ever started a league game. Now he can think about starting the next one after this, which is uh, about as far as you get when you play at this level, one game at a time. Bruce, who actually marked Ian Rush on Rush's league debut back in the late 70s when it was Gillingham against Chester. They've seen plenty of each other since. doing it on the ball but he's kept it with Liverpool with the help of Torben Picnic. Torben! Bruce certainly got a call from Schmeichel and it's easier to hear at that end of the ground. Ray Wilkins I spoke to after Queen's Park Rangers came here and got a draw recently and he believed it's a little easier to play Manchester United at the moment without that a swell of noise from the Stratford end that it's almost worth a goal to them when uh, the going got tough. It's tough at the moment. They're behind to Liverpool. Now, Rosenthal will keep doing that. And 
Michael will need to be on his metal. He's certainly got a player to mark in this particular game. Well, he may look to do at times, Ronnie Rosenthal. As he knows that Paul Parker's going to get some help from one of his midfield players. And you don't always have to take people on, Mark. They can create space by attracting players and just looking for people like David Burrows who's backing them up. But Liverpool really look quite comfortable to me at the moment at the back. They're sending in numbers. The back four looks a bit quite well sorted out, apart from the occasional little lap when they push up, looking to play offside needlessly. And Manchester United have really got it all to do. Rushes flick, it's Hutchison again. Oh, and it looped up for a corner, and just for an instant it looked as though it was going to be a similar second for Liverpool. I just wonder if he'd have known, could he have just laid it back into Ian Rush's path? Rush plays the pass and then disappears, and he comes in Hutchison. But look at Rush just on the left of the picture. One deflection for him, one against him. Coming from midfield, Manchester United aren't keeping track of Don Hutchison. Mulby, look at Hutchison free again. He's a similar build to Rush, really, maybe a little bit talker, taller rather. And uh, he's certainly got that thoroughbred movement about him for a tall man. Head of Hughes, there's Marsh. You start wondering here whether the Manchester United fans are in the ground and uh, watching. Uh, bemoaning the absence of Brian Robson, not just for his play but for his leadership. Of course, fleetingly back in the side for Alec Ferguson, but. Not quite fit enough today. I think they will, but I think United have proved already that, that there is going to be a life after Brian Robson. Rosenthal. The battle resumed with Parker and uh, a comprehensive winner on that occasion. Picnic extending himself. Aiming for Burrows, but not finding him. Throw to Manchester United. Just under five minutes to go to half-time. Hughes. Quite happy to tussle with three of them. The odds were against him. Miscontrolled by Rosenthal. Bruce bungling it forward. And it looks a steal about this. Liverpool team today, they really look determined that they're not going to give anything away needlessly. I think Ali Ferguson will be anxious to get his side in at half-time, Martin, and, and have a right, a little go at them, just sort out one or two things and just G's team up a little bit. Oh, Ferguson is offside, not McClare. Ferguson was further forward when the ball was played. So lucky there, Brian McClare, wasn't he? You're right. Darren Ferguson caught just wandering upfield there. Brian McLeod had made the perfect run. It's early to talk about substitutions, but on the bench for Manchester United, Michael Phelan and Clayton Blackmore, defenders or midfield men. This shows again that there aren't too many uh, options around for Alec Ferguson unless he delves into his pack of very promising youngsters who are untried at this level. He might to uh, start thinking more about that. Of course, the transfer market is open to him, but where do you find the... Uh, the forward players, Alan Shearer. <laughs> a little bit of a flare up here. There hasn't been too much of that. I've seen Manchester United Liverpool games with much more animosity on the pitch than we've seen today. I think that may be in the years of all the experienced campaigners, the, the Macaris and the Neils that have got downstairs. A lot of youngsters in show today, isn't there? And another one I've seen today, Norman Whiteside is here. <laughs> he probably thinks this lot are a load of softies. good position if he could have got to the ball just on the Alan Shearer episode I know uh, 
a lot of talk about why Manchester United didn't continue the bidding, so to speak. Well, I think the feeling at Old Trafford has been that Jack Walker was going to go for broke on it, really, and that there was a lot more money available, and uh, it was an auction, if it had come down to that, that United would have lost, so better to bow out gracefully. Hutchison. Well played by Mulby. Rosenthal. Sort of confidence in his task, although he's not much joy over the last 15 minutes or so down the left. He's gone on through the middle at the moment. Burrow is holding on this near touch line. Hutchison. He's perhaps thinking about another shot. Took his eye off the ball for a fraction. Chelskis. Liverpool's target now. Over the next couple of minutes just to see it safely through to half time if they can. There might be a scare for them here though. And Chelskis. And uh, still. Here's Ferguson. And Chelskis again. In from Parker. Off the knee of Nickel, headed back by Ince. McClare beating Steve Nickel in the air, but not quite enough movement around him for Manchester United. Hughes for Parker. Oh, it's a fine ball. Ferguson was the most committed at the cross. But it's brought away by McManaman. Giggs having to track back. Liverpool again, again well represented in the centre of midfield, Mulby. Oh, for Rosenthal, United are opened up. The ball past Schmeichel, but not past Pallister. Rosenthal again. Back to him from Hutchison. Ronnie Rosenthal, red nap for the cutback. Rush! A moment of history for Ian Rush. This genuinely great goal scorer now leads the Liverpool list. The magic number, 287. And oddly, his first in ten attempts at Old Trafford, now to be remembered as the ground where he overtook Roger Hunt. And what a big thank you to Ronnie Rosenthal. Missed a great chance seconds before, but gets in the box and really commits Steve Bruce. But he's aware enough there to tuck it back. And that's Rushy. Well done, son. Congratulations. Well, I said to him yesterday, let me just check you've never scored at Old Trafford. No, he said, not in the 800 years I've been playing. Well, here's McClare. And there's a mood of concern amongst the Manchester United fans at the moment. Well, you can see what he tried to do, Brian McClary. He's looked up, he spotted Bruce Grobelaar off the line, and he's just tried to nick it over him. Well, it's taken him 502 games at the most difficult job in football. Ian Rush has been truly remarkable. And that just shows you ain't happy just to sit back, isn't it, after the record? Tracking back, tackling people. That's seen Rush all over. Well, I have to say that in my dotage when I look back <laughs> with the old pipe and slippers in years to come, I'll be proud to say that I saw Rushy play. And uh, honoured to be here on the day that he set the new landmark. But Liverpool, with all their practicality and their common sense, will want that out of the minds. It's a goal for them of significance because it's given them a two-goal advantage over Manchester United at Old Trafford. The first had a touch of fortune about it. Hutchison's shot taking a savage deflection off Steve Bruce. But this is the Liverpool of Graham Souness that he's been keeping pretty quiet about. But the confidence is back and Manchester United have a big problem. Plenty of analysis during the break. At half-time at Old Trafford, it's Manchester United nil, Liverpool 2. Super Sunday, 071-782-3888 is the talkback phone number if you want to call us. Let's go. Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. 
Liverpool to restart. Manchester United, nine Premier League games unbeaten before today. Just those two defeats in their opening two matches of the campaign. But in serious trouble against their great rivals here. Well, I did say that. I thought Fergie would just wouldn't be sorting them out too much at half-time when it was 1-0, Martin, but just tidy things up. But I do think he would have really tore into his players at half-time after losing that goal right on the 45-minute mark. Mulvey. Maybe time to point out to you that Manchester United haven't scored three goals in a game so far this season. They've got 45 minutes to do it now if they're going to get three points. United need this one to go in. Grobola came up with a save of some significance for Liverpool. Well, just a little glimpse, wasn't it, of Ryan Giggs' pace and power there. Well, coming through the middle, he's obviously got... Well, they've changed it, Martin, actually, slightly. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But this is the one, it's just slid through to him. And once he's clear, no one's going to catch him. But Bruce does everything right. He stands up, stands big, makes it difficult for the youngster. But they've toyed with the formation at half-time. Alex Ferguson has moved Andre Kanchelsis to the left wing. He's put Ryan Giggs up front with Mark Hughes, and Brian McClare is now operating in the right side of midfield. Erwin's still at left-back. What a boost that would have been, Mark, just thinking in the first minute of the second half for United if Ryan Giggs could have scored there. Yes, and you wonder what it might have done to Liverpool's morale. The very thing that they'd have been talking about not happening at the start of the second half, so nearly materialised in front of their eyes. Ferguson. Giggs trying to get in behind Nickel, who saw where Giggs was. on the left there, thinking out with Irwin. The ball will roll out, and some news from the Liverpool dressing room from David Livingston. Yes, it's all uh, kind of predictable at half-time, some grim, determined-looking uh, faces coming out of the Man United dressing room, but uh, Liverpool laughing, joking, Jamie Redknapp. Parker. Well, the smiles would have been wiped off those Liverpool faces if Giggs had scored so early in the second half. Here's Hutchison. Rosenthal, who wasn't getting too much joy against Paul Parker, but stuck at it. And uh, it was Rosenthal's run which we hardly paid tribute to, really. So, Paulson has been the praise for Ian Rush's record. Oh, across the pitch and forward, really, from Burrows, which suited United until the header was collected by Marsh. Ian Rush came to Liverpool from Chester. He didn't score in his first nine games. They were wondering whether he would make the grade. Liverpool have so often been prepared to give uh, young players time. They haven't been able to do that since Graham Souness has been in charge because of a catalogue of injuries. John Barnes out, Paul Stewart. Very header there by Parker, which leads to a Rosenthal cross now. Ronnie Whelan still amongst the uh, injured for Liverpool. Michael Thomas is a substitute today. 
He not played for a couple of months. Damaged ankle against his old club Arsenal back in August. Ince. Kanchelskis is offside. The linesman on the far side. Not a lot in it though, Martin. Not a lot in it. Mike Marsh hasn't quite come to terms with playing the offside rule. Steve Nichol and uh, Tom and Picnic are looking to push up and play. But just occasionally, Mike Marsh, as you see there, he's a good five, six yards behind the other three defenders. He's got to be careful and aware of that. No, playing in defence hasn't been his major trade, as we said in the first half. Played a lot of his senior football in midfield. Getting it away from Kanchelskis, back to Grobelar. Bruce coping with the bounce. Kanchelskis, an early ball. Went well for Liverpool by Picnic. A tenacious play by Ince, but there's another offside. And again, Kanchelskis is the culprit. Uriah Rennie, the linesman on the far side. Memory serves me right, was the linesman here for the game against Leeds when Leeds felt that Mark Hughes was in an offside position. And a crucial goal was scored against the champions. Definitely a twin-pronged attack through the centre for Alec Ferguson in the second half. Ooh, that was driven by Picnic onto the head of Leclerc again. Any danger for Liverpool was wiped out immediately by the flag going up. Yeah, it's quite right, there's no doubt. You can see as it comes back and there he is. Just offside there, right there. Just to let you picture Ryan Giggs. Rosenthal. Liverpool have used the full width of the pitch and uh, have been very organised and coordinated in this five-man midfield. Well, Giggs came from deep and he might beat Grobelar to this. No. A uh, tackle that any defender would be proud of from the Liverpool goalkeeper. <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? That was another situation, though, Mark, when I felt that Brian McClare was offside. And uh, the linesman didn't put his flag up, but allowed play to go on. He looks on song, Bruce, doesn't he, today? Very bright, very alert. He wants to keep his place. And uh, I can't blame him for that. A lot of talk that after the testimonial, if he wasn't in the team, that Liverpool would let him go. He's there again, just... And a dangerous play given against McClare. Well, the challenger to the crown is David James. Had a taste of it, but he's on the bench now. Uh, he'll be, he might not be happy not being in the same man, but if he's got any sense, he's a young kid, he'll be watching, he'll be taking it in, he'll be learning. And he said all along that. Ever since he's been in the game, he's been an admirer of Grobelar. McManaman using that spindly frame of his. It's as slim as the corner flag that he pushed Irwin into. Certainly a free kick. Too many players in the England squad. They don't have too many Englishmen when you look around the team. Peter Schmeichel showing that he, like Grobelar, can improvise when necessary. Strange one for him as well. Dennis Irwin choosing to loft one that high back to him. All he has to do is just knock it out for a throw in. Well, it would have been uh, very unusual last season, but that incident more and more commonplace now. Feet. 
there was no angles being made for him. Ian Rush was arriving at speed. And I think the sun might be making it difficult. Looking from Schmeichel's end of the ground. Rained very, very hard in Manchester last night. Afternoon, particularly for Liverpool. Rush, can Hutchison get to it? He can only knock it wide to Rosenthal, who is sent tumbling by Parker. King Hackett has given the free kick. You see United's problem, Will Martin. They want to come back, they want to push men forward and get back into the game, which they need to do. But Liverpool do seem to have the type of players too. PC wide men and Ian Rush up front and people prepared to run from midfield they really can't catch them on the break if they're not careful Mulby with the free kick Keith Hackett was concerned that Mulby and Burrows were indulging in a bit of clever time wasting in an attacking situation by delaying the taking of the free kick and the referee not allowing that to happen Heads it on. And, uh, picnic. I think we can call that from the Jason Cundy school of getting the ball forward. That amazing goal from the Tottenham defender at Ipswich. And it went out on the fall from inside his own half. And that would have been something that the Danes would have joked about if Michael had been left totally stranded and the ball had gone in. just not able to build up any sort of sustained pressure at the moment Manchester United they need to put them at Liverpool under pressure at the back try and keep them under pressure just for a certain spell in the game and any, with any hope of breaking through it Liverpool look very comfortable at the moment to me it has brought into sharp focus again this concern about the lack of firepower in the uh, United ranks it's often one goal has been enough for them to win games and they've really uh, hammered the opposition and they do go behind particularly two behind as they are now the hill looks that much steeper for them to climb Mulby picnic Liverpool lording it here and Mulby's pass inside Irwin and it's reached McManaman in the very extremities of the pitch and it's produced a corner that was marvellous vision from Mulby and he needed it, Mark. I looked up and saw Jan Mulby on the ball, and nine Liverpool players were yards ahead of him. Well, they trust him. <laughs> <laughs> they have to, don't they? Mike Marsh will take the corner. Mulby's waiting on the edge, but uh, it goes nearer to Rosenthal. That was cleverly done. He knew Parker was moving up behind him. Eyes really in the back of his head for Rosenthal there. And it's produced another free kick. Parker thought he could get to the ball. Rosenthal was a bit too crafty that time. This time it's Parker who comes out on top. Until it comes to the passing, which hasn't in truth been Paul Parker's strongest suit. He is, as they say in the game, a natural defender, which is a bit euphemistic. Good recovery by Burrows. Higgs now on the right. McClare in the middle. They've swapped places for the time being. United's throw. Liverpool with two goals on their side and time on their side. to have taken charge in that and then maybe McManaman did push him certainly went down rather easily Hughes Redknapp 
offside. Hutchison showing that uh, he's still got license to get ahead of the ball from midfield. Pallister moving into that area himself for Manchester United. Liverpool trying to compress the space. And Grobola covering. But he's way out of his base at the moment. Hughes for Kanchelskis. An air of confusion about Liverpool at the moment as they try to regroup. Kanchelskis takes them on. Giggs. Bounced off picnic. Kanchelskis again. And here's Redknapp. No uh, way out. A long way forward. And that's really, as you can see, the ball given away because of that. Rush had come deep. And there's no one wide on this near side. Erwin. For Ferguson. Well. The offside is given. Paul Lintz trying to creep forward then and time the run. But that's what they need to do. They've got to have some possession. They've got to be patient. It's very, very close. I actually think Mike Marsh and this near side is actually playing him on side as well. But that's what United have to do to get back in the game. They have to keep possession of the ball. They have to keep some pressure on Liverpool and just to see if they'll crack. What a lift it would be to Liverpool, not just in terms of the league table, but to uh, their status, which has suffered. Even uh, in the great times, they were never guaranteed to win here. Manaman's attempted cross is deflected for a corner. Pace goes across to keep Hackett just pointing to the watch. He's far too long in the tooth as a referee to be fooled by any delaying tactics by Liverpool. Michael's come for this one under no challenge. Immediately Giggs moved to make an angle. Also Kanchelskis who's got the ball. Liverpool tracking back. Bruce coming forward. Helter skelter pace too quick. I think Rosenthal would be entitled to claim that he got the ball then. I think they were fortunate Manchester United. They got so many men forward and then a line along the 18-yard box. That Paul Lynch really had nowhere to go. Ferguson to take the free kick. No wasting of time for United. That's Pallister. And he was aiming for the far corner then and for an instant it looked as though it was going to loop towards it beyond Grovela. in that kind of form boost, isn't he? As if everything's going to go his way today. Clayton Blackmore and Michael Phelan, let me remind you, the Manchester United substitutes, Bruce Grubbler, are very much the Liverpool goalkeeper. In his 12th season now. I'm just looking at him at the moment, man. He's actually screaming to David Burrows. He's really concerned. Even when his team's got the ball and it's 90 yards from his goal, he's all in at his defenders to be alive and be alert. All part of the job. It's telegraph that one. And here's Picnic, who had a difficult start in his first game against Aston Villa. But I must say, he certainly looks the part that everyone has done for Liverpool today. When you've been letting in goals as Liverpool have done, you can understand that Grovelaar's not relaxed at the back. And that the discipline has got to be maintained. It would help, of course, if they could get a third goal from their point of view, and Rosenthal thought for a moment he might be in on it until the flag went up. You would tend to think, wouldn't you, that 2-0 up Liverpool of all was it? Just showed it all up now. Shut up shop and say, that's it. That'll be the scoreline at the end of the at the end of the game, but you're never so sure even now, are you? Picnic. Ents at speed. Had an easy ride that time. Just on the 
was fouled by Ferguson. Pickett again applying the advantage. Lovely layoff from Rush. Not quite so good the second time. Liverpool still working as a group. Hunting in packs, as Phil Neal said at half-time. And uh, again trying to compress the play by moving up defensively. Towards almost the edge of the centre circle. Pallister believes he can get the ball over the top. And it might be a belief that's well-founded. Robillard and Giggs. And the goalkeeper has lost out, but there was help on hand. Giggs. And it's ended up in the first potentially unsavoury episode of the match between Giggs and Burrows. It went away as soon as it started. Top master of Lanesman there as well, Martin. He was on this spot right away. Defused it very quickly. Now we can get on with the game. That's exactly what's happened. Probola is back in his goal. Giggs very nearly outwitted him on the far side. It was a clever ball by Pallister as Liverpool have pushed up. Just what I said, though, you do get a feeling that everything is going for us as well. It's going to be a change for Manchester United. And we're having a look at this replay here as Bruce comes up. Just for a minute, he's thinking, oh no, what am I doing out here? But suddenly, David Burrows gets back in there. Great tackle, that one was. Super tackle. Well, you heard what the crowd thought, not of the arrival of Clayton Blackmore, they appreciate his all-around qualities, but of the departure of Andrei Kanchelskis. Kanchelskis has only played the full 90 minutes three times in the league this season. Blackmore has, in an emergency, operated as a striker for Alec Ferguson in the past. That's another close one, though, there, Martin. Clayton Blackmore involved for the first time. That diagonal run again that causes all the problems and he's given offside, but I was, I really wasn't so sure he was. Offside again here. I mean, it's a change I'm not surprised at. David Livingston has been uh, waiting for a while to get a word in from the touchline. David, I apologise for that. Uh, it's your floor now. Yes, Martin, uh, down here after that United substitution uh, on the Liverpool front, Michael Thomas has been war warming up fairly extensively and given the pressure the Liverpool dugout have been putting on their, uh, their midfield to work harder, it may be that that's uh, an option that they'll be introducing later. Thank you, David. United with Blackmore and Hughes. And still Hughes with Steve Nicholl while sitting on the ground effecting the final challenge or is it the final one? Marsh is there McManaman oh. Oh, that was very nearly the moment where you thought Hughes with such a show of strength to go with his skill was going to bring his team back in the game was such good defender from Steve Nicholl he kept his eyes firmly fixed on the ball but the game's up a notch or two now isn't it? good play from Rush to get the ball to McManaman Keith Hackett says, get up and get on with it. Darren Ferguson had a quick look to make sure that he wasn't going to be penalised. McMahon, and I don't think in his heart of hearts, expected a penalty. It was a little bit rash, the tackle from Darren Ferguson. You see there, and it did, certainly was some contact. I'm not surprised to see the Liverpool players looking for a penalty there. Rush, Hutchison, Rosenthal this time had come infield a little. Just had a return by Pallister and Picnic. Look at Ian Russell, I mean that's that's what he's all about, it's what he's been all about. Never giving sent and half some minutes rest when they're on the ball, but put them under pressure all the time. Yes, and he still have the energy to get 287 goals for Liverpool. I'm sure Roger Hunt will be the first to uh, pay public tribute to him. 
Giggs. Interception by Nickel. 20 minutes left. And still the two-goal divide in favour of Liverpool. McLaren. It's a corner. Bruce and Pallister already on the move. Well, you sense you need something soon, don't you? Crowder just up to volume a little notch. They sense the team need a little bit of support. And they're trying to lift them. That's Hughes. Can he get to it a second time? Not quite. And Jan Mulvey, I think it was, who towed it behind. And Brian McClear's the one who gets in the way of Hughes' initial header. Climbs brilliantly for this, gets the power there. But it's Brian McClear who stops it. Bruce is getting help from the quarters he wouldn't have expected. Oh, in to take this corner. Here's Giggs, there's help from Blackmore behind him. Liverpool haven't really got a chance to push out. Ferguson got a flick. Bruce has the shot. McManaman behind the ball. Out come Liverpool. Nicol. <laughs> when I should think 99 goalkeepers out of 100 would have kicked it <laughs> hard up towards the halfway line out of play even Gravela just rolled it to keep possession <laughs> it's going to be a change now for Liverpool Graham Sunes is going to bring on Michael Thomas for Jamie Redknapp Thomas back in the Premier League after an absence of two months. Damaged his ankle joint. Perhaps trying too hard to impress against Arsenal back at Anfield in August. But he played 70 minutes yesterday, so he's going to make it up to around 90 minutes for the weekend. Again, finding the range with his passing, or very nearly so, recognizing Liverpool's desire to press into midfield. He's brought a new meaning to the word goalkeeping today, Bruce Grubler, for me. He's been like a sweeping goalkeeper. He's not only played in goal, but he's played along the back, he's swept up like that. But you'd expect a sweeper to do. He's given a plain example of it. Mulvey. He looks very sprightly. Missed a couple of games with injury. Rush. Thomas. For a little triangle going here. Who almost mesmerised Manchester United in midfield. Thomas again. Rosenthal. So frustrating. It's brilliant when you're winning the game and you can do this, but it's very frustrating if you're Manchester United you're trying to get the ball back. Irwin. Well, it's certainly the direct route that they're looking towards now. Great control by Giggs. And Mike Marsh has hurt himself in intervening there. To try and uh, appease the crowd again, the referee looked at his watch ostentatiously. The uh, reaction from the United fans suggesting that they thought Marsh was swinging the lead here, but I don't think that's the case. I think he just caught either his knee there, Brian Giggs' his knee in, and it is back there, and it's just a little bit painful. I'm sure he'll be all right. It's one of those, you've got to get up, you've got to get it moving. If you don't, they do stiffen up very, very quickly. Well, this is a match in the mega category. We've got another one for you tomorrow, of course, on Sky Sports. Aston Villa against Blackburn. Not to be missed. Well, well, this drop for United. Giggs, it's Blackmore. Takes it first time, as he probably had to do with Nickel catching him up. Well, they wouldn't have been happy with David Burrows if they had conceded a goal there. He just did what Mike Marsh did earlier, and it was about 10 yards deeper than anyone on the opposite side of the park, and you really can't do that. You're looking at play offside. 
Rush lingering on the ground this time. McManaman. Rescued well of uh, Irwin. Getting to the ball and keeping it. Picnic's got her way out for Burrows. Rosenthal's further forward and onside, is he? No. The linesman was a bit late, perhaps, in seeing that. As soon as the ball was played, it took its time travelling to Rosenthal. Fifteen minutes to go. And still, if Manchester United were to score, you wonder perhaps how this Liverpool team would cope given the difficulties they've had to deal with earlier in the season. But they're still sitting pretty. Two goals in front. The second of them, the record breaker from Rush. And Thomas trying to have another one. Burrows have gone missing. Steve Nicholl was there. Grobelaar just rolled it into midfield, giving Manchester United, you would think, a chance of getting the ball, but they didn't. And again, beautifully constructed by Liverpool. If they managed to finish this off. Well, they're not going to. So we would wear the videotape out, showing it over and over again. players have such confidence in trouble <laughs> it's quiet though isn't it man you sense around here that the, even the supporters now are beginning to think you know is it going to happen i don't know if we're going to win this game that's certainly the impression i get that uh, liverpool look very very sound and i'm not too sure whether united have got the ideas to open them up they need something special from orion Giggs flash of magic from somewhere or someone to make a real error in this Liverpool side for them to get back in the game yes I was going to say a touch of luck which they haven't had too much of in truth particularly in the way the first goal was conceded which meant so much to Liverpool Giggs deciding to whip it in early spotted by Picnic Bruce for Parker or is it yes just who can attack the ball here? It's Grobola. Well, I must say, grounds have to be redeveloped and. Uh, Anything that benefits the spectators has got to be encouraged, but it's not helping Manchester United not having that partisan population of the Stretford end. The end that they're attacking. Hughes, the end that they're scoring, are they? They are! 2-1! Well, I say that they take a piece of magic, and what a magical finish it was from Mark Hughes. Superb vision! Spots Grubbell off his right and just lifts it off. Watch this as it's played in. He has a quick look. There it is. Sees Bruce off his line and thinks, have some of that. Superb finishing. So you talked about the touch of inspiration. And here it is. Hughes recognising instinctively that Grubbell would be off his line and that a lob would be the way to defeat him. And now, can they go on to level it? in what sure to be a frantic last session here 11 minutes to go <laughs> liverpool might just have been thinking well we're going to see it off without too many alarms the major scare at the start of the second half when Giggs got through they survived that hughes has announced himself but in one way he's annoying now the referee having worried Liverpool and their supporters with a splendid goal. Well, I think the old, the old Trafford faithful will turn the volume up a notch or two now, won't they? Ten minutes, they'll be urging their team on now. Here's Giggs. Oh! 
Meister. In setting off through the centre. Hughes was there as well. And Provola will want to kick the ball out here because Mulvey is injured. Look at this. He certainly hasn't kicked it out. He's kicked it. Hutchison is going to do it. Provola taking his team's life into his own feet. Though. us again at a critical stage in the afternoon and they're talking about a stretcher here yeah, it looks disconsolate doesn't he you can't believe he's not can you the amount of injuries that he's getting in another one a crucial time in this game I really can't help you I'm not so sure what happened to Jan at all there but that's ominous, Mark, when they're tying their legs together like that, it's a horrible sign to see them keeping legs as still as that. Liverpool with still one other substitute to see this game through if they can, that's Nick Tanner. Well, it's round about here it happened, wasn't it, the incident as Ryan Gates came in? He has just above the right ankle. Stands on it for a bit and then just sits down. It's almost as if he, he, he's known what's happened. David Livingston down on the touchline. David. Martin, he was only a few yards away. As soon as the tackle came in, he stood almost motionless, looked immediately to the dugout, waved his hands, he said, I am finished looked at them for a minute, sat down, it was obvious he knew right away and uh, the seriousness was evident to the, the dugout and Nicky Tanner was warmed up immediately. Graham Souness having looked so sadly down at Mulby went across, realist as he is, to talk to Ronnie Rosenthal and I think you might have heard on our effects microphone them shouting across to get a message to Rosenthal to perhaps do a little more of his job down the left-hand side. Well, look, they brought Nicky, Nicky Tanner on, obviously the, only, the substitute they had left, and he'll just sit in front of the back four. And being a natural defender, he'll be looking for him just to protect the slender lead that Liverpool now have. Good. But they'll be looking to get the ball out of Ryan Gage, because little Nicky Marsh is struggling with the injury he picked up a minute ago. Rush trying to keep Manchester United occupied in this half of the pitch. He's well equipped to do that. Well, we've got a finish on now, haven't we? And injuries have been a factor for so many clubs this season, but at Liverpool, it seemed to have been a long, long time that they've been suffering in that respect. And another major problem in that respect to Jan Mulvick. Here's Ince. played by Marsh Thomas Rosenthal well, for Liverpool you just want to take this for a run you just want to keep the ball you can get it in the corners you do that won't you whatever you do don't give it away cheaply that's what Graham Souness will be urging his players for Manchester United it's all about getting it back as quickly as possible and putting Liverpool under pressure test some of the young kids nerves that's what they'll be trying to do and Jan Mulvey on a day when he's being watched by Richard Muller-Nielsen, Denmark's coach, who's at the ground here with a view to perhaps coming back into a side that's been struggling to score a goal in the European Championship. It's a very sad end for Manchester United. Leaving sentiment aside, might have a marvellous end here. They might suddenly be able to grasp something that was looking beyond them. They're 2-1 down. Foul by Blackmore. That's what you call goal for a right there, isn't it? In the back of Ronnie Rosenthal. It's 
Dubnik has got to keep his nerve here, and my word. A super clue, wasn't it? It's not the first time this afternoon that the sophistication of his defending has been impressive. Well, Steve Bruce is now playing up front as well. It looks like Fergie said, listen, we've got to get it up there. Get up there, Steve. Use your height, use your weight. See if you can upset someone. And he'll be a main man at this corner. Signs of strain on Liverpool faces. Well, they're so close, but I would imagine there's quite a bit of it. injury time to go onto the clock as well. Get out of my way! Dicks with the corner. Grobelar off his line. Helped by Rush. Blackmore. Everyone regrouping in the centre. Burrows putting it away. right on top of Ryan Giggs. Picnic. Well, Manchester United sense the road to recovery that they were finding very difficult to locate. And Liverpool labouring now. Hughes, Marsh, first of the ball as it dropped. Uh, it's all thanks to the pump, isn't it, now for Liverpool? The forward line at the moment, Manchester United is reading Bruce Pallister, but Clayton Hughes, they really have thrown everyone forward. Liverpool trying to keep their eyes on the ball and not think about the clock. Keep their eyes on the men that are massing wearing red in this penalty area. Ferguson. Nickel can't prevent the corner. Oh, in to take it. And Pallas to climb for this one. He does. Ferguson. It's another corner. Great tackle from David Burrows. Well, absolutely incensed that he didn't get the last touch, and I think they might be right about that. Darren Ferguson getting on his feet. It was he who, unwittingly, I'm sure, caught Jan Mulby. Pallister borrows, and it's a free kick to Liverpool, and one or two arms being raised in there in the heat of the moment. Well, it's getting tense out there, I can assure you. Scowling Paul Ince. Ferguson, who's, I'm sure, been frowning for much of the match, certainly since his team has been behind. But there's still hope for Manchester United. Knocked on by Thomas. Pallister back in position. Marsh. test of Liverpool's grip now they played well I don't think Manchester United had the game continued its course deep down would have been able to resent their win but it's not a certain win for Liverpool yet circumstances first of all a bit of individual inspiration from Mark Hughes and then the injury to the influential Mulby got Liverpool rattled trying to do then well it's 30 seconds plus stoppage time um, yeah no finesse now for Manchester United is it? let's get it forward get it up there if anything drops through then it is our day after all rush can turn well he played it straight to Blackmore hoping that Burrows was behind him it's a United throw Ian Rush simply trying to use up time. And his record-breaking goal won't mean quite so much 
if it doesn't turn out to be the winner. Parker. Leclerc going for this one. Giggs. Nicol hesitated. Oh, Marcus! A fantastic finish for Manchester United. Well, would you believe it? What a great ball that was in from Ryan Giggs. And he's got the result of the game that for a long period of time they look to be losing. All the scoring responsibilities seem to be heaped on his shoulders. Two in the last ten minutes for Hughes. Well, it's something you don't see enough of for me these days. Brian McClear makes it difficult for Mike Mars, but it's delivered to the near post, and that's how you attack the ball in there. He's got every right to be delighted with that. lost their way in the closing stages at Old Trafford and there's still time possibly for them to lose the game now the linesman steps in again out of your picture to calm things down in fact the final whistle has gone and there is still work for Keith Hackett to do to get the players to the dressing room. David Burrows, like all the Liverpool players, bitterly disappointed. Mark Hughes has brought such joy to his teammates and to Manchester United. And in the nick of time, with his second goal, robs Ian Rush of true satisfaction on the day that he's broken Roger Hunt's record. And Liverpool led by 2-0 Rush with the second of those two, Don Hutchinson's deflected effort the first. A draw is always a good bet when these two great rivals take on each other and it's come up again, but rarely in such dramatic circumstances. I think Alec Ferguson felt that there might have been some injury time to be added on there, particularly for the cost of the match for Jan Moby. There are the other two Danes who have finished it on the pitch. And they seem happy enough with a share of it all. Jan Mulby left the game on a stretcher, just part of the sensation of the closing minutes. What emotions here. And Andy Gray is that marvellous for Manchester United, obviously, but how tough is it on Liverpool? Oh, I think it's cruel for Liverpool. I think they put so much into the game, Martin. I think if you looked at both camps, the Manchester United camp will be a far happier one than the Liverpool one. As I say, it is a match that provokes strong emotions. Some of these meetings have been acrimonious on the pitch. There was just a mere hint of that in the closing moments. But for the rest, it's been such a splendid occasion. And it's finished here. Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. Mark Hughes, you're sitting down, and no wonder it, it was a day when the script was written for your rival Ian Rush, and you delivered. Was it something that you even in these closing moments could have dreamed of doing? No, not really. Um, to be fair, we didn't play particularly well today, but uh, uh, we kept at it, and uh, uh, we pushed Brucey up for the last ten or so minutes, caused a few problems, and uh, and we got a reward at the end. Can you say what the turning point was? Um, I don't know. Obviously, I think the first goal, we weren't playing particularly well at, at that time and, and that came out of the blue, really. Um, I think Clayton had just come on, Clayton Blackmore. So I thought uh, Bruce would have just come off his line a little bit and so I just, just knocked it over. The second one, again, it was uh, really in the dying seconds, but it was another goal of the highest quality. Yeah, well, those are the type of goals uh, I'm supposed to not score, so uh, it, was, uh, it was nice to see a goal. Good early ball by Giggsy and I just got in front of the line. It was great to see you go. I look quite pleased there. Can you ever recall scoring two goals of such high quality in one game? Um, no, not really. I've <laughs> got to be modest there. I? <laughs> so that result, after, after being so far behind then, is it something that uh, gives tremendous heart for, uh, uh, to demonstrate the character of Manchester United? Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, uh, as I said before, we, we didn't play particularly well, but we kept going, and uh, that's, that's a sign of a side that's uh, got strength and it never feels that they've been. You think it'll be a different reception from the manager in the dressing room than you got at half-time? No, I shouldn't think so. It'll probably be the same.
Thanks very much. Congratulations. Thank you.